OK. Buongiorno a tutti. Hello, everybody. So my name is Marco Hotari, and I work as a GIS specialist in Helsinki Public Transport. And I'm going to give you a broad presentation of what we've done with OpenStreetMap lately. So let's get started right away. First, a few slides about what our organization does. It, uh, it's, uh, prepares the Helsinki Region Transport System Plan that includes more, more than just public transport. That we do in collaboration with our uh, municip member municipalities. And then we also plan the, and organize the public transport, of course, in the region. And then we procure the bus, tram, metro, ferry, and commuter train services. And then we also have the public transport fare and ticketing system on our agenda. And then, of course, marketing, passenger information, and that kind of stuff, and ticket sales and ticket inspections. And uh, our organization includes nine municipalities. That's the blue ones on the map. And then the others, the whites, are, they are possible, they have possibility to join us. And, that's the area for which we do this uh, traffic system planning that includes all other modes of transport as well. Well, a few years back, we started to think about a map production renewal that uh, uh, aims to a consistent visual look and feel for all our maps, both digital and printed. And uh, also, we tried to keep in mind uh, that our processes would be systematic and effective. We reduce manual work and uh, try to increase the ability to react on fast on changes. And one key element was uh, to start use OSM as the main data source for all our maps. And uh, we also try to keep in uh, mind that we develop products that's based on customer needs. We have done some uh, uh, some test with test with the, the users to see that we are on the right track on that one. And then we also have, a, uh, besides this map production renewal, we're renewing our public transport register. That's the base for all our GIS data. The tra uh, routes, the ten timetables, and bus stops, and that kind of stuff. Uh, a few years back, uh, the map products we have looked a bit like this. We had a lot of different, different types of map, open, closed, Google, OpenStreetMap, some, in some cases as well. And this is what we aim for. Like we have an, one custom map style that uh, includes several zooming la layers and the so source data uh, would be available as vector layers. And what we've done, we produced a map style of our own with Mapbox based on uh, OSM Bright template and uh, uh, Finnish, Finland being a multilingual multi uh, country, we offer this uh, map service in Finnish, Swedish, that's the two main languages in Finland. And then we also have a joint where we show both Finnish and Swedish names. This is because uh, we need that on printed maps. So our journey planner can switch when you ch ch change language. So we can change the from the Finnish map style to the Swedish map style and so on, but we can't do that on printed maps. And this map, map style is available as API, uh, both uh, as a raster background, uh, as tile map service, and map, map box vector tiles for so-called HSL layers, like stops, terminals, vending points, and park and ride sites, and city bike stations, and fair zones, as we're renewing them in a few years, so, uh, or late this year, so those are coming as well later on. 
Yeah, some of you might be familiar with our journey planner. If you go to raytheobus.fi, you can test it out. It's available in English. But uh, a little more about this pro whole project. It's a joint project with uh, uh, matka.fi. It's the national journey planner for Finland. And then there's this Bauti also that um, is the national uh, uh, ticket system in, in Finland. That, and because of this collaboration, this journey planner is also used in about 10 other Finnish cities. And what we've done, the project name is DigiTransit. You can find more information about that on digitransit.fi. And the source codes are available on our GitHub repositories. But uh, to uh, take a, a brief introduction, it's based on Open Trip Planner API. It's um, and we use uh, Open Trip Planner API and the routing engine. And top on top of this, we have made in principle just the uh, user interface, and that's uh, what I would call that the DigiTransit is about. But the data that comes into DigiTransit, there's uh, real-time data in Siri format. And then we have uh, OSM. That's the key component for the geocoding and routing. But then also, of course, the GTFS style that was mentioned here, here earlier on. It's uh, a format for the routes and timetables and so on. But as we're going national with this version on the National Journey Planner, the OSM, OSM is not so comprehensive in northern parts of Finland. And so we need to back up it with some other admin, administrative open data, addresses from the Population Register Center, and uh, names, name data from the National Land Survey and some administrative areas. And uh, what comes out from the APIs, we have map tiles, we have geocoding services, routing services, and real-time data services. But you, if you're not familiar with the journey plan, you should check it out, ratheopas.fi. Uh, besides that, we've also created a map generator. It's a web-based tool for generating maps. Uh, the output format is PNG, and uh, if you want, you can get out the PNG world file as well, so you can continue working with the uh, with the files in the in QGIS or something, some other GIS tools. Source code is also in GitHub, and we have some different use cases. For instance, root maps, traffic bulletins, and we're building on with new products all the time. And those, as I said, those are also available, source codes on GitHub. And uh, here's what the interface looks like for this web page uh, map generator. You can, uh, there on the left side, you have uh, some of the layers available. There's background map and uh, Swedish names, Finnish names, and stops, and text, and some other things that you can choose if you want, want them visible or not. And then on top, you have a couple of parameters for, for the size and the accuracy and the scale and such. And then in general, that's uh, the light area is the area you get printed as a printed out. And then you just generate it on the bottom, uh, generate map. You can save some, uh, uh, if you have done a, pointed out a certain area and some certain, certain layers, you can save that as a template and use later on as well. So now here's an example that we produced with our map generator. It's uh, road maps that we use on, uh, we have this, uh, handheld maps that we give up to customers on the 
upper left, uh, upper right, and down on on the right we have a this uh, on bigger hubs we show the show the public transport network in a greater way and we worked quite a lot with the labeling in this case but we get got out a fairly good result I think enough <laughs> enough to put it out to customers in a way and then one other thing we use the map generator for is to inform about uh, diversions in traffic moving stops and move, move moving lines and that kind of stuff. Another tool we also produced is stop poster generator. It's also a web-based tool and the, those source codes can also found, be found on GitHub and in the middle you can see the how the interface for that one looks up. You can choose from uh, a stop poster, a big one we put up on a, on a bus stop shelters. I'll, I'll go into detail about the poster on, on my next slide, so I don't talk mo more about that. But when, then we also can choose just timetables, and this output format is PDF. And uh, there, in the interface, you choose from those two options, and then you can choose if you, uh, the next, next thing you choose here is uh, the listing. If you want to list individual stops, or then we have also grouped the stops by, uh, into smaller packages, because the people that, uh, put them on place, they are contractors we use, and they, they have certain, certain packages, there's certain, certain stops that they take care of. And then you just generate these, and it, this is fully automatic, and what, what you get out is something like this. I have three examples of the stop posters here, and you can see that it's a modular, modular, thing that we get out and depending on the on the right there's a stop with a lot of timetable data so then the map it's a map that's showing the nearby area for the stops is shrunk into a, a quite small map but maybe these other two are more, more the normal normal uh, results as and uh, on top we have a list of the lines that we have on the that go past the stop and then this timetable and then we have this uh, nearby area map where you show the uh, the stop that you're actually on on the middle and then what's around you can see a few of the nearby stops and points of interest and such and beneath that we have a schematic presentation of the lines that you can take from that stop and where they go and if there's uh, tariff zone changes or you, you can change to trains and such you try to change show these as well and as I said this is a modular construction so if if uh, the timetable area takes uh, a lot of space then you drop out the top uh, listing of the lines and the next thing to drop out if there's uh, not space it's this uh, schematic representation and then the map itself and so there are some stops that are full with timetable timetable uh, presentations and uh, and this well you you could understand that this Posters can only be used when we have space for them, like like those bus stops where, where there are shelters and that stuff. Yes, about these enough about these tools about working with the community. Um, this uh, journey planner we had, we have um, we have made a, a sort of guidelines uh, or instructions for the community to understand how 
the journey planner works with OSM data, and we have on, one web page for that. And uh, uh, sooner this year, we'll also be coming out with a explicit permission to import our data into OSM. That's one thing we've forgotten <laughs> for a time. Uh, there are a few organizations in Finland that already had issued this permission, like National Land Survey and Finnish Transport Agency. And then, of course, we have mapathons and demos from time to time. We, we try to cooperate with the uh, uh, human OpenStreetMap team in Finland and different digital transit stakeholders whenever possible, because there's not so much resources and for that. And then, at these mapathons, we have some different mapping themes and, and events. I have those uh, examples I've listed down. There, those are links. I hope you can get this. Um, but maybe I could show one if I, if I can. For instance, this adding buildings. It, it's a link to an actual document we use at the mapathons to. Maybe not. <laughs> well, well, maybe I go back to the presentation. You can check the links. I can, and I can. If you're interested, I can show you them later on. So, not, let's not get stuck with that. Yeah, and then, of course, we try to edit the OSM data. And uh, recently, we had a small import because we noticed that Swedish road names in our area were quite. Uh, uh, quite missing, so there's some information about that in, behind that link. And then we try to handle and monitor changes. We edit OSM ourselves, and we try to use OSM notes to crowdsource mapping tasks. And we're also piloting with Mapillary to take street street level photos. We have people driving around measuring stops from time to time, measuring stops, locations, and distances between each other. So that's the, those teams have tried, tried out Mapillary, and we try to expand that with some other teams that are on the ground, so to, so to say. And we try to monitor changes as well. We, this is a thing we just begun. We tested analytical different engine, and Maybe we also should test OSM chart. Haven't done it until now, at least. Validation. We try to use uh, ready to use tools like Osmos and Keep Right, because what's the point in trying to invent a wheel for the second time? Uh, that we can use when we look at the geometry and self, but of course, then we also can compare OSM with other official open data. For instance, our own data or topographic data from the National Land Survey or Digi, Digi Road is a Finnish transport agency's official open data for the road data in Finland. And though I mentioned earlier that we also use the pub, population register center address data for for the as a base data for the journey planner, and then there's also a service map data in the Helsinki region for the service meaning uh, uh, municipal services like sc schools, uh, healthcare, and that, that that kind of all. And one key point in the validation is, of course, providing the results to the open data community so they can so. We don't have to update all the data ourselves. That the lacks we find out, so they can uh, contribute as well. And this is a slide I drew out uh, maybe a year ago about this whole thing. This validation ideas I had that we could use customer feedback that we get from multiple channels, process it and filter it in, in a way and. Validation tools, we have different monitoring changes, discovering errors, and comparing to reference data. 
that could be one fee feed feed for the task list for OSM improvements and we could also use the journey planner logs for listing problems for instance if we find that someone or people are searching for a restaurants or points of interest that's and they get uh, they can't find it on the journey plan and we could use the log to report that hey here's something that maybe should be on open street map and put it put it all up on a task list of OSM improvements that this list could be like a open list for ourselves but also to the community that they can contribute and this is more of, more or less a vision of ideas. These aren't present at the moment. So, and uh, I had the idea of an OSM community manager at us that could handle feedback and update OSM and <laughs> take care of data imports and OSM wiki. And let's see how that goes. And so far, we have haven't had an OSM community manager, but I'm, I tried to more or less manage these things at the moment. But. Sorry yeah. to interrupt, but we are running out of time. It's already oh. five. OK. OK, so sorry. Yeah. Because I had to come. So you can finish in one minute if you can. Yeah, OK. Uh, pros and cons in OSM. Uh, the Most of these I already mentioned. Crowdsourcing and ability to react on changes and Cons are uncertainty about the da data, and someone's, someone's touched on the challenge between developers and GIF professionals, formats, and standards. And then, uh, challenge we have OSM is not perfect at the moment, and we're thinking of is really one map style enough? And uh, in routing, we also have a idea of the different uh, roles that we could use. Uh, maybe we could uh, have a accurate, more accurate classification for walking groups. And how do we tag invisible stops? We haven't done that at the moment. We have some stops that. And in the future, we develop validation and schematics maps and digi-transit, try to develop walking and cycling, and maybe some other mapping projects as well. And here are some links to resources we have. So sorry for. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. So questions? Hi, thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you for your work. I liked it. You're a great role model. I think I have two questions. Since your tools are open source, did you ever have people ha actually creating pull requests for features and changes? And second, um, since you rely on open treatment for routing and map creation, do you have problems with vandalism? Yeah, pull, pull requests. We have had those on uh, the journey planner, but not on these other tools that they haven't been so around for so long. And so long, we uh, there haven't been so much vandalism. That, but that's uh, as as I said, we try to increase the increase the, the the validation just in case. But so far, not. Do you know if any other places have taken a copy to use for themselves of the software? Of the journey planner, yes. There's a Norwegian. Uh, National Journey Planner, and then there are, I don't know, now I'm not sure. I've been, there have been some interest in Italy, in the Bolzano region, I know, and then some other have also tested it out. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so we have to stop here. If you have any questions, sorry for the questions, but you can ask him later because we are running out of time. Thank okay, you very sorry much. for that. I'll be glad to answer. Thank you.